and Margaret and Windsor, and uh, I'm just going to try to get all this on a 10-minute tape, so I'm going to go here. I was kidnapped in Buckingham Palace, 1941. I was born in 39, excuse me, moving around. This is my father, Edward VIII, who never married this American spy, Wallace Simpson. She married an imposter. My father was married to Claudia Ruth O'Keefe, sister to artist George O'Keefe, Madison, Wisconsin. This is my uncle George, Elizabeth's father, who became the illegal George VI. His wife, who's referred to as the Queen Mom, and that's a lie, her connection, Elizabeth Bowes, and this is Elizabeth, the illegal monarch is using my money giving away Great Britain and caused him to die because of illegal treaties her father signed with the United States, which allowed them to put their military bases all over British soil and use it as a launching pad to take over the world. The Brits had to fight against their own interests and take the heat for crimes they didn't commit. They're hostages, just like me, Victoria II, the real monarch. My father was forced out, Roosevelt, My Uncle George, Joe Kennedy, Ambassador uh, to England by Roosevelt, Father JFK, the Jews, the Rockefellers, Rothschilds, Bilderbergers. And by the way, um, the Rothschilds attend to Elizabeth Bowes. So the New World Order or Illuminati kidnapped me and all this and got the help of my uncle and some of the Windsors. I didn't find out until 86 about my, excuse me, until 83 about my real name and kidnapping. I'd written a book about mind control, and I'm not going to go into that because I want to get to the point of this while I give you some backup. I wrote about mind control murders, 76 to April Fool Day of 80 when they went after my brain, and that's never stopped. They put antifreeze in me. I should have died. I had a letter from the U.S. Attorney's Office, uh, FBI, dated June the 23rd, which is my father's birthday, by the way. Only, of course, it's in 79, and the uh, antifreeze happened in on April Fool's Day of 80, and that was uh, something if the world watched it, had to watch it, that it would make an impact. It seems you, you have to see something graphic that is visual. Mind control is not visual. Um, now that I'm just going to swiftly show you some of the mind control murders. This is uh, the uh, Boston bombing, Russian. This is the psychiatrist, uh, Fort Hood shooter. And he was born in Roanoke, Benton, here in Virginia, where I'm, I've tried to live on the Appalachian Trail, Star of Frozen, you name it. They've run me like a fox or a, sprayed me like a bug or a, the worst criminal walking the face of the planet. So um, he finished at Virginia Tech, Blacksburg, next to me, where a lot of these mind control murders, for example, April the 16th of 07, the 33, uh, that were shot and killed students by another student from Seoul, South Korea, who shot himself then because he was under mind control and commanded to. This is uh, Timothy McVeigh, who said the military implanted a chip up him, and he died for the Oklahoma City bombing. And you got Brian, and his name is not Brian Nichols, the young man in the uh, jail in Atlanta for murdering that was mind control was Brian Nichols, Terry Nichols, is still in prison in Oklahoma City, uh, supposed to charge with helping McVeigh. And uh, this is Larry Flint that was shot in um, Lawrenceville, Georgia, and the person was programmed to shoot him. And uh, that was March the 6th of uh, 78. I was living at Marietta doing the book. That was an endorsement when I ran into a camp uh, in a campaign. This is Yen Zoring's diplomat son, German diplomat son. I uh, was at the time Bedford, Virginia, next door to me. The Hayson murders. This was a butcher knife used in it, and almost beheaded her parents. 
they were mind control murders. They're victims. And by the way, um, I ran across, our paths crossed when I was in the campaign to replace Larry McDonald, uh, September of 83, and then flown out to Flint. Now, what I wanted to get into here, I was watching a Dr. Phil just now program, and it, I'm going to quote it. It was uh, Honey Boo Boo's mother, and it, it was the interview that was uh, where she allowed her boyfriend, who had been accused of child molestation and molesting her daughter, uh, Dr. Phil was interviewing the mother of Honey Boo Boo. And in it, this struck a chord because um, there's no way I've given names and all along the way over the years where I work, the name is associated, the people I wrote about, mind control murders, warning Rosina Matthews, the forensic pathologist at Larry McDonald's Hospital that was shot and killed, uh, Gene Strokeman, I've listed them. And this is what um, Dr. Phil said to Honey Boo Boo's mother. No way could anybody think up uh, the things that she, that she told happened unless it actually happened to her, quoted from um, Mama Boo Boo. In other words, the little girl, her daughter, um, wasn't Honey Boo Boo, but the other one, couldn't have been graphic and told, made it up. But I'm relating that to me, what's happened to me. I'm 75 years old. I didn't lie about anything. My, uh, I will say this, and the tape will go off. My illness, the illness I have is I'm allergic to chemicals, and I have an immune disorder, and if I'm force-fed, like in a small room, and you can control, or a house, but if you can control uh, where I am, a tent it can be used because you can use sealants come in at night and spray me. Oh, they have. So you can, it's toxic vapors that they've used on me. And I've quoted State Trooper uh, Carl Barton, retired. His wife said in 09, August 9, 14th of 09, this is how we run you with chemicals. So I'm just about dead. I'm so sick and uh, my Organs have deteriorated, lungs, kidneys, you name it. Now I want to say there's different ways in beheading. They're talking about ISIS, and um, it's appalling. I'm just going to name, because this can be used against me too. Um, Dr. Hyman Miller was a Jew, doctor, psychiatrist in Huntsville, Alabama. That's where NASA started in about 58, and this is where I was taken, 40 miles to Moulton, Alabama, when I was kidnapped. Now then, um, Hyman Miller diagnosed me. I went there for uh, what amounts to being depression. I'm not sure I was really depressed with, if you get the gist of what I'm talking about that's been used that I've written about and used on my son. And how do you prove it? It's invisible. Anyway, I went to him in about 62. He and Berg, who's a Jewish uh, female uh, anesthesiologist, um, you should see what went on there. I would be hospitalized. There's a hospital. I'm put in and tortured, a misdiagnosis, murder, because there, there, that wasn't the diagnosis. There wasn't one. It's what made it happen. I was put on... Drugs that would kill a horse, uh, Melorel, Sicanel, uh, trying to work, Thorazine. This went on for years, and I was even taken by my husband, who I later found out was part of the CIA. So he was meant to uh, marry me, John Childers. Uh, I would be taken to Hammond Miller's office on Lowell Drive there in Huntsville, given shock, shock, shock. And then Peggy Ferguson Lauderdale, a friend of mine, and I'm going to quote what this doctor was doing, that Victor Gonzalez doctor was doing, raping his patients, hypnotizing them and raping them. Now, I, they, you can't call it hospitalizing because they're using the mental health system to discredit and torture you, and it that in itself, misdiagnosis, deliberate use of drugs, psychotic drugs, uh, all kinds of um, not misdemeanors of assault and crimes. Anyway, this went on over years of shocking me and shocking me.